Hello, right, once again, tinkering on the Fiesta. Uh, just playing around with the back radiator, uh, trying to get it all buttoned up and put in for the last time. So I'm just running the wires for the fans out for a grommet. Uh, I need to cut a little bit out of this corner here because the back loom to the back lights goes up in this little notch. I've just neoprened up the front and back of the charge cooler rad and then bolted the cover cowling on properly for the last time. So yeah, I just need to tidy up the fuel pump wires and I've run a bit of neoprene round where the, the cowling's gonna sit on the bottom of the car. And then once that's all in, I can mount the pump, wire that up, run another wire from the relay up the front to the fans that are underneath the radiator. So that's how I think I'm gonna run the pipes, the feed pipes off the windows. Just need to put a couple more bolts in and that's in for good. And then I can start running the water pipes up to where the charge cord is going to be mounted off the pump and off the tank. Looking good. Okay, just going to start unwrapping some bits. Get the old wing mirrors, I might as well put them back on. These are replicas of old Engelmann's. They used to have Engelmann's on it, but um, I broke one of them. So these I think came off of the uh, Zach's old Fiesta turd but they're pretty, pretty good quality replicas of Engelmann mirrors. Bit of a German touch. Oh yeah, you notice I've taken the spots off because uh, you guys pointed out they looked a bit too small. So that's the wing mirror back on. It's the cat in the window. original little paddle uh, steel ones. Dude, if you break anything, I'll break your face. So I'm just redoing some of the uh, the earth strap for the battery and I'm gonna do a new earth strap for the engine. Um, got these crimp tins. And as I said, Barton lent me the big crimping tool. So I'm gonna do, do it properly this time for this bad boy, Bosch. Figured I'd put a little bit of heat shrink on it as well, just to neaten it up a bit. So I've actually found it easier if I put it in the vise and actually set the depth on the uh, stop to the right thickness of wire. So these are coming out a lot nicer. It's much better. So just doing the terminals on the tower switch. And before I put the uh, gear shifter back together, I just want to drill some holes in it, lightweight it, race car parts and all that. It does weigh a bit, all made out of mild steel, so. Just marked it all up, set it, punched it, and I'll just wang some holes in it quickly. So, you know, something to do. So, there we have it, all Swiss cheesed up. Probably saved myself about four grams, but it's more for the look. Um, just going to bolt that back on, put all of the linkage back on, and then I can put the panel and fasten the actual tower to the car for the final time, hopefully. And then that's that done. Nice. Right, another little side project. Whilst we're in lockdown, I cracked out the little drone again. I've had to do some repairs with JB Weld on it. Where I've broken one of the support braces. I need to pull that back to there. And I've uh, hot glued the camera in because it kept on falling out. Yeah, I've been honing my FPV drone skills whilst we're uh, in lockdown. So it's quite a pokey little garage. Obviously the Fiesta takes up most of it. Uh, over here, got some uh, go-karting trophies, 
Over here some more. Uh, up in the loft or loft or the roof space, just storage for all the bits. A tripod. Let's see if I can get through the car. It's crashed. Let's try again. Nutter. FPV drone racing nutter. That's pretty much it. There's not a lot to look at really. A couple of you guys asked for a little tour of the carriage and he's crashed. Right, another little side project to keep me entertained whilst we're in lockdown is uh, I've got a few of these plates left over for the coil on plug conversions on the ZTEX and I literally just need to machine up some spaces and finish off drilling and tapping the plates. Uh, a few of you guys have been asking about them through uh, Zach. So I figured whilst I've got some time on my hands, at the moment I'm not doing a lot. So I figured I'll get some plates done. So here's the last of the plates. Just need to clean them up, finish off tapping them out. And then uh, using the old lockdown lathe, we'll go and machine up some more spaces. Don't forget to check out the merch in the description below for all the FPU hats and uh, race engine t-shirts. Two hours work there. Okay, so I've uh, finally managed to grab the dashboard out of the loft, and this is out of Zach's old white Mark One. Bit of a death trap, but we cut a load of holes in it, mounted these bezels in. Obviously, got a load of autometer gauges to go up here. The custom made switch panel goes in here, so we've hacked about this bit. The original clocks are gone, and we've hacked out this bit, made some little angled brackets. And that then allows me to bolt this plate on. And uh, I've got the rev counter, speedo, and obviously two boost gauges going in here and some warning lights. So for now, just gonna tidy this up um, and offer it up in the car. And I need to work out what wires I need where, and I need to do a plug. Obviously chop the original clocks plug off the car and work out what's going to go into this bit and I've obviously got like the fuel fuel level and water temp going in over here so I need to reroute the wires that are over here back over here and um, I want to use this bracket here to mount my I've got where is it I've got a big autometer oil light and shift light so that's going to go up on top here I think so yeah it should look pretty good I love this dash. I made all of these years ago when I was at my first job at Futurama. Drilled out all of these, screwed them all on. Yeah, I need to work out whether or not I'm gonna have vents here because I'm gonna run a heater eventually or whether I'm just gonna blank these off and have like a, a funnel coming out here because all I really need is to demist the windscreen. But it's a job for another day. I've also quickly routed the pipes, the water coolant pipes that go from the charge cooler that's in the passenger footwell all the way back to the radiator that's in the back of the car. Uh, a lot of you guys think that that's the engine rad. I have still got the engine radiator still up the front. So this is purely like a massive overkill charge cooler radiator that's going in the boot. So it's completely separate to the engine cooling system. And that's just gonna pump water, circulate water from the boot and the tank and the pump and the radiator all the way forward to the big charge cooler and then run all the way back. So yeah, it's got nothing to do with the, uh, the engine uh, cooling system. Henry. Henry. My brother. Brother from another mother. Don't put your back to me, boy. What's that? Sketchy cat. Oh, 
me. You having fun in lockdown? You humans about all the time. Inside the Go on. See you later. Well, that's a dash quickly just offered up, and uh, I just wanted to check. I was a bit worried about obviously the gear stick being in the way of the gauges, the view, and the handbrake, but obviously they're a lot lower. And I can still get access to my little switch panel that's going in down there. And then obviously I've got a good view of uh, all of the gauges that are in there. I do like the no dash look, but on the same note, this dashboard has to be used, I think. Plus it just hides all of the crazy wiring that's still, still to be sorted out. It probably won't be sorted out. I think I'm just literally gonna budget as best as I can and throw it all back under there where it was before until such time as I can get Darren's dad to do a full loom for the car. But that'll probably be when it's all up and running and when all this uh, virus stuff's gone away. So yeah, getting there. I'm just gonna bang the, bang the gauges in and work out what wires need to go where. Now for the fun job of unboxing all my auto meter gauges. Big shout out to Cirque Motorsport, that's where I got most of the uh, bits and bobs from and the senders from Real steel in the end, but yeah, this is the, this is the fun job unpacking stuff and bolting it all up. So that's all the gauges offered up. I have got a fuel pressure gauge, but I don't think I need it. Um, and I probably won't bother with the oil temp gauge, but the AFR fuel level. Hopefully that works with the standard sender that's in the tank. Oil pressure is the important one. Water temperature. I've got the sender in the thermostat. Oil temp, as I said, I won't use. Volts is a straightforward one. And then, yeah, got the old Monster Taco mounted in the middle, Speedo, and the two boost gauges. So the little one will do between, uh, which one's the little one? That one will do between the big turbo and the little turbo. And then that one will do the uh, pressure that's actually inside the plenum. And then I'll need to mount my little LED lights. So I think I'll have one for indicators, high beam, low beam, and then a couple for the oil and the oil pressure and the uh, alternator light so yeah it looks pretty pretty sweet Zach calls it the uh, Millennium Falcon dash because it's got all the gauges right once again that's pretty much it for this video thanks again for watching and checking in uh, don't forget to help support the channel check out the sick merch got the hats and the engine t-shirts just finishing off the Pinto drawing so I'll upload that and get that all vectored and uh, on the store shortly the link is in the bio below uh, until next time I will catch you guys later take it easy mm -hmm.